Bowman. Yeah, Deputy Speaker, look, thanks very much. And I think uh, people in the gallery must be getting quite used to health debates where uh, both sides of politics just complain about cuts from the other side. And it's, um, it's singly unsatisfying, I think, for people listening to this debate. Uh, but more tragically, Australia really is one of the few nations where we have this deep partisan political divide over health care. We're almost unable to talk about significant improvements in the quality of health care because there's an abject fixation on the quantity of funding. And I think that may seem quite superficially a reasonable place to start. How much money are you spending in health? But ultimately, when you're talking about the user experience in health, it's about the quality of the money spent and whether it is directed appropriately. And it would be very helpful if we could rely on both sides of this chamber to at some point in this next three-year term engage meaningfully in that debate. Now, look, I could spend my next four minutes talking about how they cut money and they froze stuff and they suspend. Of course, there's a litany of these descriptions that can be attributed to both sides of politics, but it's not going to help us get anywhere. I mean, ultimately, we need to be turning to the smartest minds in health policy and saying to them what will take us forward. And as a former GP, with respect, I would certainly appreciate it if my payments were indexed every year. I would be very happy for that to occur, but some greater goods need to be considered, and that's the sustainability of the system that provides those services. Now, both sides are guilty of this. So before we get into simply regurgitating the ministerial talking points, let's just remember that ultimately the fee-for-service approach is increasingly becoming difficult to sustain high-quality care. If it's simply focusing around how many item 3s, 23s, 36s and 44s you can bill in eight hours in a cowboy practice in inner city where you're seeing 80 patients a day, then honestly time is a very, very significant proxy, an inverse proxy of quality of care. And I want to see the GPs that are doing the serious work with chronic disease, seeing 20 or 30 patients a day, acknowledged and rewarded. But you can't if you simply let Medicare rip with over-servicing in areas where it's all about the speed. And unless you have an honest conversation about that, me and you, an honest conversation about rewarding quality, then we'll simply have these debates forever and a day. Now, it was Francis Peabody back in 1920 addressing the Harvard Medical School. He said, the key to caring for patients is quite simply the care of the patient. So how do we penetrate through and say what is the best possible user experience? And I'd have to say, even you over there, politically across the partisan divide, have to confess we need to look at the new models that are going to deliver quality. And the healthcare homes to start there. 360,000 patients enrolled, 200 practices across seven PHNs, and we're just going to say enough of the alphabet soup of health authorities. We do not measure ourselves simply on how much money we spend, how many pot plants we can put into multi-high-rise buildings full of non-service providing bureaucrats providing data we never use. That's not improving health without spending more money. It's not just about the quantum, Deputy Speaker. It's about the effectiveness of the spend. Now, with respect, it was Kevin Rudd, with so much promise, who said he talked about running this show nationally but controlling it locally. But in the end, it was funded by debt and completely out of control. And he came to states and he said, look, we'll swap the 40 federal 60 state funding split to 60-40, but we're going to do a smash and grab, or should I say a grab and smash tactic, GST, and take 30 per cent of your GST to do that change, meaning the Fed's putting just one disappointing percent more into the hospital mix. And that's why they smelt that a mile away. And that's why at the end, Catholic Health Australia, it's why the COAG Reform Council said, look, you made barely, barely 2 per cent difference in the rate of people being seen in A&E on a reasonable period of time, but you let the OR rates blow out. The chance of seeing a GP blew out. I mean, Stephen Duckett, your age-old ally, said it, said it himself. He said, an alphabet soup of new authorities tons of data and no changes in access to community care. No changes. In fact, a blowout to residential aged care. Look, just be honest with yourselves. You are no better at running the show, but we can together work to make sure money is spent better. That has to be the objective here. Sure, we don't control many levers here in the federal government, but we need to work with states to do it better. Stop funding corporate health and start devolving responsibility. Let the regions of our great states have more say in how they employ, how they fund and how they deliver health services. Call it a Medicare local, call it a PHM. The future is giving support to general practitioners and private, um, direct primary health care providers to do their job better. 
It's not about buying more three by three tents. It's not about standing outside fairs and saying, please grab an apple or come for a walk. Ultimately, it's about taking the sickest, most stratified, high need patients and giving them the care they need, the wraparound care they need, and together, both these sides of this chamber, I secretly believe, can achieve that noble goal.